we've reached the point in our service where we observe the Lord's Supper. We will base our meditation on a passage from Scripture, so we would like for you to have a copy of God's Word in your hands. If you don't have a Bible, please raise your hand and the uh, men will give you one. If you don't own a Bible, you may keep this as a gift. This morning we're going to be looking at a passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. In observing the uh, Lord's Supper, we remember the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. We do this by partaking of a cracker, which represents the body in which he died for our sin. And then we drink uh, juice, which represents his blood, which was shed for the remission of our sins. And this morning, we're going to look at the last part of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, where Paul describes how the death of Christ is the working out of the wisdom of God in the salvation of man. God's wisdom and the world's wisdom are shown in this passage to be in opposition, and God's wisdom will prevail. Paul has just finished addressing a problem in the Corinthian church of division, People were following different leaders. Then he reminds them in verse 17 that when he came to them, he preached the gospel not with cleverness of speech. He said if he did that, it would make the gospel void. There's something about the wisdom of the world that cloudies the true gospel. But when the true gospel is preached, notice in verse 18, it divides humanity. Those who are perishing regard the message as foolishness. And those, in the case of those who are, or in their case, they're proving what Paul said down in 1 Corinthians 2, 14. A natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them. And why can't they understand? Because they do not have the Spirit who gives understanding. On the other hand, those who are being saved have found that this message has powerfully changed them, and they welcome it as God's way to take away their sins. And in, in their case, God has made foolish the wisdom of the world by, which, by, serving, by saving those who believe the message which the world calls foolishness. In the wisdom of God, no one can come to the knowledge of God by means of human wisdom. But it pleased God to save those who believe the message of the cross. Jesus said in a, a similar thing, after his disciples returned from a mission to the nation of Israel, they were all rejoicing because the evil spirits were subject to them. And Jesus said, don't rejoice in this. Rather rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. Then Jesus began rejoicing greatly in the Holy Spirit, and he broke out in a thankful praise to his Father. I praise you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, the fa yes Father, for this was well-pleasing in your sight. The triumph of God's wisdom over human wisdom is further illustrated in the case of unbelieving Jews and unbelieving Gentiles. Jews seek for a sign. Greeks look for wisdom. But the message of Christ crucified is a stumbling block to the Jews and its foolishness to the Greeks. Notice in verse 24, though, that both Jews and Gentiles who are called by God that this same gospel is the power of God and the wisdom of God. In the wisdom of God, he gives believers what unbelievers can never attain, no matter what they're seeking. Next, Paul calls attention to the type of people that God calls to salvation. In verse 26, he asked the Corinthians to consider that not many of them were wise according to the uh, fleshly standards, not many were mighty, not many were noble, but God has chosen those regarded as nothing by the world in order to shame those who are thought highly of in the world. 
In the final analysis, God's wisdom will prevail. All worldly wisdom will be nullified. God has brought to an end all human boasting. And they bring, and that brings us to the verse that we want to zero in on this morning, verse 30. Listen as I read it. By his doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Christian, we realize that by nature we're unable to respond to God. In fact, we were at enmity with him. We acknowledge that the only reason that we are in Christ is because God did it. In the wisdom of God, he would become the sole cause of our salvation. But Christ, then Christ became to us wisdom from God, and he also became our righteousness. We now have a right standing before God because Christ's righteousness is imputed to us. We have none of our own. Christ also became our sanctification. The holiness we could never attain on our own becomes ours in Christ. And finally, he became our redemption. His death on the cross became the payment of the ransom to release us from sin's power and its penalty. In the wisdom of God, the salvation which was impossible for man to attain was accomplished completely by God's doing. Human boasting is excluded. We are, our only boast is in him. Christian, as you partake of the Lord's Supper, realize that the death of Christ is God's wise plan to make us, and it makes us completely indebted to him. Worship him for what he has done and also for who he is to you. You may partake when your heart is prepared. If you're here this morning and you realize that you've not come to the place of trusting Christ alone for your salvation, you may be relying on your own ingenuity or resources to make it to heaven. We ask that you refrain from partaking of the Lord's Supper because this ordinance is for believers that are fully trusting Christ. We're glad that you're here, though, and we urge you to consider that Christ's death on the cross is God's only remedy for lostness in sin. A sinner who sees his need of salvation and receives this gift from God passes from death into life. If you would like further help in understanding God's plan of salvation, visit with one of the elders or someone here at the church afterwards. Jesus has promised to those who come to him, I will in no wise cast them out. The men will now come to serve our, the elements.